Welcome to my review for Gunsmoke for the arcade. This game also got an NES port. That's probably the most common port of the game, and that version is actually quite a bit different. It has shops, and you need to unveil a wanted poster within each stage for the boss to appear. Otherwise, the screen just scrolls indefinitely. So it's actually it's interesting that they, they changed up the style quite a bit for the NES version. And I would say that that's really the version probably to start with because that's, you know, a much more, it's like, it's a very, you know, it's like a beginner game compared to this, but it's actually a pretty hard NES game. It's not an easy game, but this game is ridiculously difficult, you know, on the default setting. I think even if you set it down to easy, it's still ridiculous, but, um, you know, the dip switch, but the game as it defaults is, is insanely difficult. One of the hardest games that I ever completed. So for this version, it's actually, um, very straightforward. It's pretty much just a shooter where you have three different directions that you can aim your gun. And there are slight variations of that if you combine certain buttons, but I found them to be worthless. So I just used the three firing directions when I beat the game. I also completed the NES version, so I'm comparing them off of my own uh, recollection of the games. So um, you have your three firing directions, and you get power-ups for a uh, faster shot, um, faster walking speed, which is one of the most essential power-ups, and firing distance. So the boot will give you speed, the gun gives you firing distance, and um, the bullet, I think, increases your firing rate. I didn't notice much of a difference with the firing rate power-up because I was using rapid fire on my controller, so that may have kind of uh, negated that effect. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over most of the bosses and kind of I'm, I'm going to try to give a good feel of how the game pacing is and how it's kind of uh, super unevenly paced difficulty wise which is not uncommon for old arcade games but it's kind of interesting to, uh, to see how the game progresses so yeah I would say this is one of the hardest games that I completed which I mentioned in my tutorial of this game which you may want to check out but um Second to this, actually, if I want to compare a console game to this level of difficulty, Super Smash TV, I would say, is one of the hardest console games. And um, definitely one of the hardest games on the Super Nintendo, which I, I beat recently and did a tutorial on that as well. And I would say that Super Smash TV was extremely manageable compared to this game. You know what I mean? I mean, Super Smash TV is definitely up there in difficulty, but um, this game is way harder because... This game, you're only looking at like 30 second checkpoints and unlimited continues. So you can always start back at the last checkpoint. And the checkpoints probably only last about 30 seconds, but surviving that 30 seconds can be insane. And some of them probably last, you know, over a minute. But, um, you know, a lot of them are probably like 30 second checkpoints. So you would think this game would be way easier than Super Smash TV, which has, you know, limited continues. You only have four continues in that game, and it's an hour and 20 minutes long. This game's only 30 minutes long. And you, you never have to restart the entire game. You only have to restart at the last checkpoint you got to. And like I said, the, the checkpoints are very small. So you would think this game would be much, much easier than that game. But this game is way harder because some of the checkpoints are so fucking ridiculous. You know, you feel like you hit a brick wall and you don't know if you'll ever even be able to complete them. Because you get killed so fast. And the main difficulty comes within a few of the boss fights. There's just a few brutal boss fights uh the hardest one taking me nine hours for about a 30-second checkpoint. So um, it puts it in a perspective, you know, the type of difficulty. So I would recommend starting with the NES version. If you really want a really fucking extreme version of the NES game, then play this. I wouldn't say this is going to be approachable for most players. I think this is going to be a top percentile kind of game as far as people who are going to actually want to try to complete this and actually, and actually do so, you know, because this is one of those insane kind of games. But, you know, with perseverance, you know, it can definitely be done. And if you are looking to uh, challenge yourself and do that, then, you know, check out my tutorial to give you a good understanding of, of what went into beating it and how I practiced and all that type of shit. I go into all those details in that. So, shortly on the third stage here, now, it depends what ROM you're playing. If you're playing a, a, another version of the ROM... The Indian boss is actually the third boss, and the Indian is the hardest boss in the game, at least for me. That's the one that took me nine hours to beat. But in this ROM, your third boss is going to be the ninja. 
And this was my first real challenge. Now, this guy is easy compared to later bosses, but this guy took me three or four hours when I first got to him. And you're going to see me kind of blaze through him easily at this point because, one, I got, you know, I, I was much better at the game, and two, I just, you know, I also was getting lucky as well because a lot of this game for me would be luck when I survived. But I was able to get a lot of hits on him and take him down, you know, pretty quick because this fight can really drag out and it can be very hard to survive because. His shurikens that he throws out home in onto your last position pretty much, and he shoots about, uh, you know, what, two or three of them at a time? Or actually, what, one, one behind the other, actually, not at the same time, but still. This was a very hard fight initially, but this was only the beginning of what was to come, you know, and it got much worse from here as far as difficulty. Now, after you finally beat this guy, you do get a little bit of a break, and you think, well, you know, maybe the game is going to give me a, a break, maybe it's going to get easier. Because the next boss is a joke, and the next level is a joke. I beat the next level probably within 20 or 30 minutes, if I have to remember. But um, the next stage went by very easy relative to how long some of these parts took in this game. And the game took me about 25 hours to beat. And remember, we're talking about a 30-minute game with unlimited continues. It's 30 minutes with no deaths. And it's unli you know unlimited continues, and, and the checkpoints are only about 30 seconds most of the time. So for a game like that, it's incredibly dense. Now, this is the next boss. And this boss is a fucking joke. Super fucking easy. And remember, I'm comparing it relative to what came before. The uh, the ninja boss was way, way harder than this guy. This guy's very easy. The only challenge that would be here is, is the amount of enemies swarming you. But that's normal. So you got to get used to that. Cause that, that the enemies never stop. The enemies constantly flood in while you're fighting all the bosses. That's another thing worth mentioning. So it's, it's relentless. You know, constantly, endlessly respawning enemies with all the boss fights. But that was really, really easy for, for this game. Now then you get to this boss. The next boss is brutally difficult. Now I did this in a very difficult way where I was pretty much, you know, dancing with death the entire time, one pixel away from death. Um, and it was extreme. And I found out later that there is an exploit to beat this guy easily by staying on the right side of the screen and, and not killing the gunners on the left side of the screen that are in the building. But I go into that more in the tutorial, but... For the way I played it here, and the way that the game seems to expect you to play it without any exploits, is uh, extremely fucking brutal. Um, you know, one of the hardest single segments that I've probably beaten. I mean, it was it took me about five hours, but it could have taken a lot longer because it's it, it was extreme. So, you know, that that's your next huge challenge after the ninja, and that's a massive challenge. Then right after this boss comes the Indian stage. Now, the Indian stage, the stage itself is, is quite hard, too, and it may take you a while to get through the stage, but the stage is going to be the least of your problems, you know, because once you get to the Indian, it's, it's like a fucking brick wall. And um, I wasn't even putting a den in the Indian for a while. So, um, and that, that, that checkpoint with the Indian took me probably over nine hours to beat. So a good chunk of beating this game, actually, that it took me to beat this game was on this fucking Indian where I spent about nine hours on this guy coming up. And yeah, next week, next Monday, I'm going to review Super Smash TV, which was another super hard game. One of the hardest console games I ever completed. And um, this would be above it for sure. But this is also an arcade game. And arcade games, uh, generally arcade games are, are usually way harder than most console games. If you were to take them like pound for pound, you know what I mean? Like compare similar games. But of course, there's always outliers um, on console games, and there's outliers in arcades that are, you know, arcade games that are that are really fucking easy. There's always going to be variations, but overall, my, you know, for me, the average uh, arcade game, console style arcade game with penalties for death, is usually a lot harder than most of the the old NES games or Genesis and all that shit. You know, similar games of the time. So yeah. This is the Indian, and this is fucking ridiculous. Now, it's not going to look that hard because I uh, was very fortunate that I was able to get a lot of hits in. I've danced with this guy probably for over a minute before, which is insanely long for this kind of intensity. But here I was doing really good damage, got very lucky with my damage. Um, you know, it takes a lot of skill. Luck only buys you a few seconds in this game. So if you get lucky, you may miss one bullet. But, you know, the next bullet's coming right behind it, so... You really got to have crowd control down, and you got to be in a fucking zone. You got to feel the pulse of the of the shots that he's firing out, and you got to constantly be moving. Otherwise, you you get fucking nailed. 
And um, it really, you know, when, if you play it, you'll understand. It's one of those kind of games. I recommend using an arcade joystick for this game because you want one finger on each of the firing buttons. You don't want to be using your thumb to try to hit all three firing buttons on a, uh, a standard controller. Now, if you play with an overhand grip with one finger on each button on a standard controller, then you may, you may have a chance. But otherwise, it's going to be very hard to do with your thumb. You need to switch directions immediately when firing. Now, this is a very easy fucking boss. This comes right after the hardest boss in the game. So you see how unbalanced the difficulty is. You know, sometimes you have two super hard bosses in a row. Sometimes you have a super extreme boss and then a super easy boss. Now, this guy, this boss, it can be pretty hard, but it's really not that bad. It didn't take me that long. As long as I stayed on the right side and fired into his shoulders... It didn't take me too long. Now, it looks a lot easier here because I got lucky, but when you're on that right side, you can easily get mobbed by the crowds and just totally destroyed. So it looks a lot easier than it is, but relative to the rest of the game, that was a very doable boss fight. Really not that bad for this game. For a console game, that, that it actually would have been a pretty pretty hard you know, boss for like a typical, you know, like Gunsmoke NES, that would have been a very hard boss probably. But, um, yeah, Gunsmoke NES was interesting how they added the shops. I would say it's a more fun game to play. Probably, a, you know, in some ways a better version to play for enjoyability. But this is a very tight game with extremely good controls. It's just super fucking unforgiving. So I would say it's a great game and a classic, but it's, it's going to be extreme. So it's not going to be something that is going to be approachable for most players. Like I said, I think this is one of the hardest games. Um, you know that I've that I've beaten, and I've probably beaten around two thousand console games, console style games currently. And uh, this one is at the top. The only thing that really compares to this is probably shit like um, you know challenges I put on myself, like getting a forty million in Ninja Gaiden Black was extreme, but that was hundreds of hours. So yeah, now you have the final boss, which has three bosses you have to kill. That was the first one I just took out. But I actually, I ignore the second guy. Le leave him alive on the left bridge and just take out the final boss. Now this guy probably took me over six hours, if I remember right. This is, this is another one of the hardest bosses in the game. It's extremely difficult. And here I found kind of a, a, a not really a safe spot, but a place where I could pivot and shoot. Still very dangerous. And then there's another semi-safe spot at the top that's really not a safe spot, but it's safer. And trying to get out when those bullets fire and get up there and take your shots and then get back down again and survive is extremely difficult to do. You can also only hit him when he's standing up. So yeah, I showed all the bosses in the game to try to give an idea of the pacing of the game so that you can see that it's really unevenly paced, which is you know not necessarily a problem. It's just it's kind of odd because you would think it would get harder as you get farther in, and it does in some ways. But in other ways, the Indian boss can be the hardest boss in the game, at least for me. And that can be the third boss if you're playing a different version of this ROM. And if not, then you'll fight him as the sixth boss, which, you know, still you wouldn't expect the sixth boss to be the hardest boss in the entire game. I think there is either eight or ten stages from what I remember. But I'm going to leave a link to the tutorial version in the description. And I'm also going to review Super Smash TV, which was another extreme game that plays kind of similar to this. Overall, I would give this game an 8 out of 10, and it's really only for players seeking an extreme challenge. Thanks for watching.